Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode, I am going to try and bring Jamie and Jedcas back to Phobos Lander 1. Well, this was actually the Phobos Lander, but there's another Phobos Lander 1 vehicle that they have to rendezvous with to either get back to MTV2 or possibly land on Deimos. I have not decided yet. However, I am a little bit concerned about orbits because I actually already started recording this video and what happened when I tried to start recording this video was that after I exited Phobos orbit and got into Mars SOI, the orbital inclination, the relative inclination of this craft and the target craft, Phobos Lander 1, was changing all on its own. And yeah, right now you can see the orbital period changing. I'm just keeping an eye on everything, but that's only because this is Phobos, and Phobos is weird, right? Uh, Phobos is very indistinct. So let's just get us out there and see if I've got problems again. But I'm not entirely unused to weird orbital shenanigans when it comes to Mars orbit, and especially when it comes to Phobos and Deimos, but um well we want to minimize that as much as possible <laughs> let's put it that way so um, we're gonna head out this way and let's make it a little oh, not that much i just want to make it um a little bit not too little though i don't want like phobos perturbing me i, I can't really but because of the way we have patched conics but anyway we will get out of there Everything should be in line. You can see uh, relative inclination should be like 0.4 degrees, right? That's what it says. So just remember, we had a 0.4 degree inclination with respect to Phobos Lander 1. Um, in the previous attempt to record this, that got up to 4 degrees. <laughs> so, and I did not change the inclination at all. So that's why I'm paranoid and I had to restart because that's not supposed to happen. The reason that was critical is because we only have a certain amount of fuel and I was under the impression this would be enough fuel to get back to Phobos Lander 1 without Phobos Lander 1 having to do anything. But obviously if our inclination goes wildly off, that's not going to work. And selling the fuel down. We only have four ignitions and now three ignitions with this engine. Okay, I've turned off RCS and everything. This says 0.3 degrees. Good. And we are going to exit Phobos SOI. So, goodbye Phobos. Now, we do want to plant a flag on Deimos. So we can't go with this. Remember, we don't have hydrazine. We found that out the hard way in the previous episode. So some, somehow we have to pick up some hydrazine in order to do an EVA. It also looks a lot better when we get out of its SOI. <laughs> and yeah, anyway, but we need some hydrazine to do stuff with. So, uh, inclination 0.33. Well, look, look, I've got RCS off. It's going up. 0 0.36, 0 0.37. This is not good. I'm going to jump to Phobos Lander 1, uh, switch. Maybe that'll sell it, help settle it down. But yeah, it's doing the same thing. Maybe it's something to do with Phobos. You always have to watch out for Phobos. Okay, 0.39. And it stopped. And we have the same target. Alright, I'm gonna turn this one's RCS off just in case, you know. Oral period is staying the same, inclination is staying the same. 0.39. All right, hopefully that, you know, stabilized the Phobos super lander as well. Okay. It isn't going up on its own right now. So we're here. Let, um, I should wait until we go down. Let's lift the orbit up and then pull it in maybe. Okay, so that lists the orbit up, and I'll even do a correction for the rest of the inclination there. That's 63. And then the actual rendezvous will be sort of a negotiation between this and Phobos Lander 1. 
Post Lander one might have to do some of the business. Okay, it looks like going back and forth between the two vessels worked, maybe. Problem is, last time I didn't catch that nearly early enough. Well, there's Mars and there's Phobos there still. Okay, selling fuel down. And ignition. With the orbit of Phobos only being, you know, a few hours long, it's not too bad. We've got lots of food, water, and oxygen though. This is probably going to end up being sort of a depot. Okay, we do want to point retrograde here. And it looks like the relative inclination is nice. Okay, and I'll use some. I don't know how much I'll need, but I'm selling the fuel down. And ignition. So, still needs 135 meters per second. Let's go over to Phobos Lander 1. So, one question, does this have hydrazine? No. Well, then we'll have to go to MTV2 first, no matter what. I mean, we could land on Phobos, but they can't get out and plant a flag, so it's no fun. I suddenly have a drastic idea which may work. It's not the best idea, but in the pinch where we don't have the ability to use KIS to take off the, the hydrazine modules, because I think that's the only other way we can do it, what we could do is take off the entire module from the MTV2 that the hydrazine is in. I'll show you what I mean when we get there. That's a bit drastic, but it would also cut down on the dry mass of the MTV2. It'll take some redocking though, and that's dodgy. It's interesting how different things are for Kerbal players and in real life, because the thing I struggle with is of course landing on Mars in a way that would allow me to get off of Mars again, but that's one thing NASA has, well, as far as getting off of Mars, NASA hasn't done it, but NASA has landed on Mars, obviously, and uh, people coming up with Mars plans are just fine with landing on Mars and making it into Mars orbit again, the on with Starship and all that business. The one thing they don't want to do, and what they try to avoid in their plans is a Mars orbit rendezvous. And that's the one thing that, you know, Kerbal players would have no trouble with, right? But in real life, it's much more difficult because of navigation and all that business. We know where all the craft are. We have basically perfect knowledge of that. But uh, in real life, it's not so easy. Okay, we have docked. Uh, refilled its liquid oxygen tanks is not exactly what happened, but all right. Um, what do we want to transfer over? We might as, the nitrogen isn't going to help us over here. Well, well, yeah, it's just going to leak anyway, so let's bring over the nitrogen. If we can, where the heck is the nitrogen on here? They both have about the same amount of food, water, and oxygen, so no easy way of transferring it one way or another. Okay. Actually, this has a lot more food, water, and oxygen. It has the, all these tanks, but it doesn't really matter. This has enough, too. Okay, so transfer kerbals. So many menu items. And that is all. We will let this go now. And we have to figure out what to do about this. So 2,080 meters per second. We don't have hydrazine, so we need to get back to Mars Transfer Vehicle 2 which is here. So altogether about 600 meters per second, a little bit more than that, maybe 650 to get up there. It shouldn't be too much more, since that apoapsis is pretty close to Deimos, 
Shouldn't be too much more to boost this up to Deimos level. Maybe we'll still have enough. Okay, but for now, this is gonna flip around and we have to wait six hours for that transfer. Two bright lights there that I wanna identify. Is this an object enhancement? Well, it says show names. Oh, there we go, Venus and Earth. And ignition. Yeah, it's back to pretending that we can't do that part of the burn with this stage, even though obviously we can. I don't know why it does that. The problem with trying to take a module with hydrazine off of the station is that we don't know whether it has the right docking ports. When I say station, MTV2. There is an actual other station in orbit around Mars right now. Remember that. Doesn't even say anything about the Kerbal inventories on here right now. We just need a drill somewhere. I don't know where it might be. Okay, so taking a look at all of our modules and what might have hydrazine. We know the Lynx itself does not have hydrazine. Um, let's click on its pod. Maybe we should change that next time. Something else needs to have hydrazine, gosh darn it. But then the Lynx doesn't... I, I think I did modify it so that it allows for EVAs now, so... All of this business doesn't have any additional... It's just... Back here... Oh, it's actually on the Xenon tank. I mean, we could just take the Xenon tank and empty it out. But it's it's not light, and unfortunately it has the propellant only docking ports only. It doesn't have the other docking ports. Now, it's possible to string everything together using one of the tugs. Right, the tugs have one of the NASA docking systems on one end and the propellant only on the other. That's additional mass, but it can be done. But then we would have to take this tank off, but then we would get the hydrazine. Well, anyway, let me bring the lander into dock first and then we'll think about it because it's getting close. All we really need is to grab one of those hydrazine tanks and then we're all good. Okay, coming into dock. Well, we're repositioning right now. Okay, now coming into dock. Okay, we have docked. And now, let's see. Let's transfer some Kerbals around and see if they can access some useful inventory. So let me transfer... And no, Sigbert is a pilot. Um, I think the, o the only engineer we have is Jedcast. Alright. Jedcast, I don't even know where Jedcast's inventory would be. Do we want to do the complex thing with this uh, Xenon tank? Let's bring the other tug in to here and use the other tug for stuff, maybe. Well, I decided to check on this Station 1, Mars Station 1. And it does have a KIS container, but I never put anything in it. So, yeah, this is not very useful. As far as whether it could rendezvous with our our Mars transfer vehicle, I think it could, but it wouldn't have a whole lot of Delta V left after that. So, maybe we'll leave it be for now. Um, yeah, let me see about bringing in the other tug, which is here. And just get that down to Mars Transit Vehicle 2 and see if it can help. But I'm loath to just take off all the hydrazine from Mars Transit Vehicle 2. Because then they, the Kerbals can't EVA. Then again, I don't see a clear reason why they would EVA. So there's that. But anyway, let's get this tug down to see if it can help out. And maybe we'll pull off that xenon tank so that uh, we can use the hydrazine from it and get to Deimos and land on Deimos. That seems difficult though, but we'll see. 
Okay, I've made two quick corrections already. I've lifted its periapsis up and also adjusted its inclination a bit. And we're going to go over the periapsis and we'll adjust that to make sure that we have a nice close approach to MTV2. Okay, retrograde. And ignition. Okay, we are in the station. Station. Mars Trans Vehicle 2's render range. And now. Well, I mean, I could just sort of go over there and grab that tank, basically. Okay. This is probably going to be a bad idea. Saying. Uh, we're going to do something drastic. So, the thing is, we've got the molten salt reactor there. And we've got to pull all this off. These have their own controllers, so that's fine. They should have range, that's fine. So here we go, we're going to undock this. Liquid oxygen reserves are low as expected because, well, it would be. Um, this should still have enough methane and oxygen for control of that section. But now we've got a free section here, controlling from this docking port. And now we're going to slip the tug into there, grab the tank solely because it has the hydrazine. <laughs> Let me make sure this continues to target that. Um, you know, maybe not that. Uh, maybe the next one up. Set that one as a target. And let's just sort of park it. We don't want it floating off all over the place. All for a little bit of hydrazine to do an EVA, I swear. So the way I figured, now I don't really want to land the Xenon tank with the lander onto Deimos. Could do it, but at this point I'm figuring that the Kerbal in question is going to just deorbit themselves from orbit of Deimos, land on Deimos, plant the flag, get off of Deimos, and rendezvous with the spacecraft like that. Is that a NASA approved maneuver? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it doesn't seem too unreasonable when it comes to Deimos, to be honest. Can't beat the background. Looks like we need to be 180 just for the proper orientation with these ports. Okay, docked. And let's get that off. And moving it off. Oh yeah, this is totally going to be balanced. <laughs> uh, well, we need our SAS to help with that. So let's um, turn, turn all the things off for a sec and instead see how much delta V this has. Let's say control from here. Um, 3,000, I think. Let's see, activate engine. 3,000, that's not bad. I mean, I had 7,000 coming in, but... I'm estimating it'll take at least 1,200 meters per second to get over to... Uh, to Deimos. Now, we had about 1,200 in the lander, so the one thing I didn't want to see was anything less than 1,200 here. You have 1,200 in the lander and 1,200 here, Probably we're okay, so I think we can go to Deimos. All right, let's just redock this. I don't want to have it floating around, obviously. I'm almost tempted to just dump that propellant module, which is, I think, empty right now too. But we'll keep it. We won't litter. And we'll want to reuse it too, I suppose. 
Though, considering the thing bringing up the fuel to replenish it would basically be that tank again, we could just reattach, you know, attach the new one instead of refilling the old one. Okay, we have redocked the propulsion module. And now I'm going to undock the lander again. But we need to have a uh, reassessed crew. I think we'll have Jamie uh, just have some fun in the transfer vehicle. And we'll get uh, Sigver and Rib Van to head to Deimos instead. Okay, we're not picking up any extra fuel here. We're just going to take what we've got and undock. Oh, uh, Smart ESS has not been pointing at target very well. Let me just... Thinking I should just dump the Xenon gas. It can't be that heavy, though. And of course, once we connect, we will find out how much Delta V we really have. But this should have, the tug should have way more than the methane and oxygen we have in the lander, so I think we'll be all right. And this is a weird way to go, though. Okay, successfully booped, and 2,237 meters per second. We want to control from here, and we'll be using these two engines, and definitely not the engines on the tug. Okay, so that's all right. Let me make a plot for Deimos. Okay, I have made a meticulous plot whereby we do a single maneuver here, 107 degrees, uh, sorry, meters per second to um, resolve the 3.6 degree relative inclination. And then at periapsis, we do another burn, which is, I can't really see right now, 22.2 meters per second, not a whole lot. And with that, we get an encounter and it's a nice tangent encounter, so it should be as little delta V as we could hope to require to capture. Which, of course, is going to be difficult to determine, but around 600, which is sort of what I was expecting. Okay, right around there, 548. So let's, let's say 700 altogether to round it out, and... So 1,400 round trip to get back to MTV2, and we do have that. So let's proceed. What an interesting assemblage we've discovered. <laughs> okay, that should be good enough. Let's get rid of those and just go to periapsis now. And point prograde. Okay, and... Ignition, hopefully. Let's see, Deimos about 20,000 kilometers. We should see an encounter, of course. Uh, that looks like an encounter to me. All right, proceeding. We may have to Okay, so one minute, two minute, three minute. <laughs> We've got two minutes to do this burn to capture around Deimos. We should be able to do that. But we could start now, technically. Okay, orbit, retrograde. Where is this lump? There it is. Hopefully nine kilometers is safe. I think so. Hey, okay, we've passed periapsis. Uh, we've got two minutes to escape. 
Okay, things are gonna happen rather quickly now. Oh, not that much, not that much. Oh. We need to get into a nice orbit at 20 kilometers now. Oh, you know what? Just RCS will do. So please tell me that in Realism Overhaul the EVA packs have more than like a dozen meters per second of delta V. Well, Realism Overhaul plus Kerbalism, which is what required the Hydrazine in the first place. If they have less than 12 meters per second, then they should be using nitrogen instead, that's all I'm saying. Okay, a low enough periapsis is that? Maybe a little bit lower. 14 hour orbital period. Hmm, the other question is whether it's okay for a Kerbal to go out on their own when the orbital periods around Deimos are so long. But then we should be able to rush, uh, uh, what you got, rendezvous anyway, considering the orbital period, uh, orbital speed. So, should be okay. They most still has the spike, by the way. Spike remains. Okay, well, let's bring down that orbital period by slowing down. Okay, I don't know what's safe and what's not. Let's get it to a six hour or you know, orbital period. All right, I want our scientist rib van to EVA. Oh, um, uh, you just stop. Okay, rib van, you have hydrazine. And we do have a surface reading, so that's good. Okay, well now our velocity vector is straight down, so that's good, right? Go straight down. We've used about... Okay, we'll use 10% of our hydrazine. Let's be cautious. What? I don't have the MechJeb displays, unfortunately, so I can't really see the actual height of the terrain. Okay, we are on the surface, and I'll well, take surface sample, but it won't matter. Um, plant a flag. Okay, rib van on Deimos. The hydrazine. Worked. It should. Okay, but we're already floating up now. Okay, well, without further ado, let's just get him back. Um, RCS on. Lift off. And we're gonna aim directly at Mars Transfer Vehicle. Not Mars Transfer Vehicle, Phobos Lander 1. We weren't that far away from render range of Phobos Lander 1 <laughs> the whole time. Well, we didn't uh, come even close to the oxygen water limits, of course. Really quick. We could have done some more science down there. Yeah, we certainly have enough hydrazine for that. We've got like 400 units. Whoa! Okay, it does this weird reorientation thing that I don't let that. Yeah, I don't need that in my life. Please stop doing that. Okay, grab and board. All right, so that was an odd, awkward improvisation, but it worked. Uh, we have to get these guys back over to MTV2, but I'll leave them here for now. I'm going to boost the orbit, I think, just to make sure it doesn't accidentally crash into Phobos or the game doesn't think it'll crash into Phobos. But I'll do the whole bring them back part next time. And we should also finally get to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1 arriving at Earth. Been an interesting excursion. For our Kerbals. Okay, that should keep them safe right there. 
All right, so with Deimos landed upon and flag festooned, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.